the last stream, we were working on finally getting this guy right here, the diamond mesh for our heavy dark oak sieve to allow us to sift nine items simultaneously and more importantly, uh, allowing us to sift crushed netherrack, which in turn unlocked nether quartz and glowstone for us. That was important because what I want to work on in today's stream is setting up a basic refined storage system and kind of the bedrock of refined storage is the quartz enriched iron. Quartz enriched iron, as we saw in the last stream, made with nether quartz and iron dust. We do have a little bit of nether quartz ready to go here. We've got 21 and it is a one to three ratio. So one uh, nether quartz and three iron gets you four quartz enriched iron, uh, much like the recipe for bronze with copper and tin. Uh, so we don't need a ton of nether quartz today. I think we might need a bit more than the 21 we have. And so we probably will do a little bit more nether quartz, or sorry, a little bit more nether egg sifting in today's stream. But uh, I think for the most part, we can kind of jump right in here and quite possibly complete almost all, if not all of the quests in the refined storage quest line today, because there are not really too many quests in here. And most of the quests do relate to just setting up the basics of refined storage. So the first quest is to make the machine casing, uh, which is used to make most of the key blocks for a refined storage system. This is made with eight quartz enriched iron and one machine frame. So uh, I do believe that we do have some quartz enriched iron over here. We've got four, which um, is definitely some, but not really a lot. Uh, so I think what we should probably do right out of the gate is probably grab a good amount of iron, if not all of our iron, and drop that into the smeltery. We can then, of course, combine that iron with the nether quartz over in the induction smelter to begin making some quartz enriched iron. Not to take too much of a detour right at the start of the stream, but I do think that one of the things we are going to want to work on in today's stream is upgrading the induction smelter, because as you'll know, if you've been watching the previous streams, the induction smelter is very, 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 very slow. And as we mentioned last time, there are ways that you can speed it up. So I'm pretty sure that this has changed in the new version of thermal expansion. It used to be that you would make upgrade kits. Uh, now you actually make these guys right here, the integral components. There is the hardened, reinforced, and resonant tiers. For now, I don't think we have what it takes to make the second tier here, just because we don't have any signalum yet. It's quite possible that we could make some signalum. Yeah, it's a combination of silver, copper, and redstone. So the signalum actually isn't too difficult. So maybe we could look actually at making the uh, reinforced version today. But uh, to start with, of course, we're going to start with the hardened version. You have to use the hardened version to make the reinforced version anyway. Uh, so to make this, you need four invar, one gold gear, two glass, and two redstone. That actually seems very doable. I think we might have a little bit of invar lying around in uh, the chest next to the smeltery over here. We do. It is in plate form, which is not where we want it. And we also have two, which is really not ideal. So I think what we might do while we wait for that iron to smelt up, is that uh, we might grab a little bit of nickel. So we'll put four nickel in here. Uh, that's gonna leave us with one iron ingot. So I will pull one iron ingot out over there, but the rest of that should turn into invar, uh, which we can then of course pull out. Do we have four gold over in here? We do not, that would have been far too easy. I was hoping we could just put that gold directly into the multi-servo press in order to make the gold gear. Alas, it would appear that we are gonna have to do that with our regular smeltery. That's fine, we'll throw that in as well. Uh, over here, this is done. And although we've not yet actually sped up the induction smelter, I think it is going to be in our best interest to get the iron and the nether quartz into the induction smelter as early as possible today to start making that uh, quartz enriched iron. So once all of those are melted down, we'll pull the gold out first, I guess, in gear form. And then uh, in var wise, I guess we'll pull that out in block form because we've got uh, so much of it. I didn't quite intend to make as much of it as I did, but so uh, we might as well go ahead and pull that out in block form. And once that invar is done, that should be everything for this. So uh, this is going to increase the base speed of the machine. It's going to make the uh, induction smelter faster without affecting the efficiency. It is going to increase the amount of power the machine uses, but it's going to kind of maintain its current efficiency, if that makes sense. So we're not going to lose any efficiency. We're just going to use more power and gain speed proportional to that power increase, if that makes sense. One other thing we can do is we can invest in an augment for the machine. Specifically, if we go with the flux linkage amplifier, this will increase the process speed of the machine 
but reduce its efficiency. So this will increase the power and increase the speed, but the speed will increase less than the power use, if that makes sense. So the, the increase there is not proportional. The power goes up more than the speed increase that you get, but it does make the machine faster. And right now, I think that's really mostly what we care about. And thankfully, this doesn't look too difficult either. It's two lead gears, one redstone flux coil, and then two electrum plates. And I actually don't think we've used much lead at all, if any, so far in this playthrough, despite the fact that we have quite a bit of it uh, over here ready to go. So if we take four lead here, that's going to get us eight ingots worth in the old smeltery. We can then pull that out into the uh, gear cast. I have made a mistake here with the uh, nickel. Thankfully, we can just pull that back in using a uh, mechanical pipe, which is what I will do uh, momentarily once the lead is done. And then electron wise, we do have some electron plates ready to go. But uh, these guys, the bronze gear, the electron plate and the iron plate are reserved for making more machine frames because the machine frames here are, of course, required in the making of the machine casing. And I'm pretty sure that if we're going to make the draw at the refined storage controller, the disk drive and the crafting grid that we are going to need precisely three machine frames, which is why I had that ready to go at the start of today's stream. So not too long later, and we have what it takes to make another one of these redstone flux coils. We also have the electron plates. We have the lead gears. We have a bunch of invalid. We'll craft that down into ingots. And uh, we've also got some more iron, which is beautiful. And the gold gear is also ready to go. And so I think, Chad, that finally we should have everything that it takes to make both the hardened integral components and the flux linkage amplifier. So let us head on over to the old crafting station. Let's see if we can't make this guy, which is missing two glass, which should be over in here. And two redstone, one and two. Boom and boom. And then for the flux linkage amplifier, we've got everything it takes. Perfect. So if we head on over to our induction smelter, this is done with the quartz enriched iron, which is perfect. Uh, but now what we can do is up in the augmentation tab, we can put in the hardened integral components. So if we click this tab on the left, it shows us the current energy use, which is zero because the machine is currently not doing anything. It also shows us the maximum that it can use and the machine's current efficiency. So right now it maxes out at 20 redstone flux per tick. If we upgrade it with the hardened components like that, that doubles up the maximum power usage. So now it can use 40 redstone flux per tick, which I think makes it twice as fast because the efficiency is still at 100%. So it's still 100% converting all that power into speed, which is perfect. Now with the linkage amplifier, if we put this in, the power does double again to 80, but here the efficiency drops down. So we're getting a 100% jump in power use, but we're not quite getting a 100% increase in speed. The speed's only going up by a small amount, but it is still getting faster. And so now if we put in another three iron and another quartz, this should be significantly faster than it was previously. Still not crazy fast. And you can put in more of these flux linkage amplifiers. You can have up to three uh, along with the integral component that would make it faster again, albeit less efficient. Uh, we could also look at adding in the upgraded component as well. As we saw earlier, there is a reinforced and a resonant version. Uh, the reinforced version is going to increase the power while not affecting the efficiency even more. And then the resonant takes it even further than that. So we could look at that later on down the line. For now, I think this is probably okay. And hopefully 44 quartz enriched iron is going to be enough to at least get us started with this refined storage quest line. So let's begin by doing something like this and grabbing at least one machine casing. And we'll also claim our free C books here as well. Now, next up on the list is silicon. So silicon is made through the induction smelter using sand and silicon dust. So we do have 172 silicon dust ready to go. Uh, we've been getting this from all the overworld matter that we've been sifting uh, with our flint and iron meshes. And all we have to do here is grab a little bit of sand, of which we have almost 2000. And if we throw both of these into our new faster induction smelter, boom and boom, we should start to get silicon somewhat quickly. It's still not particularly fast. It's still a fairly slow craft, especially given how much silicon uh, we are going to need here. But any second now, we should get our first piece, which is going to be enough to complete the quest here. And I'm going to leave this running to produce more while we start working on the raw processes. So here, 
there is the basic, the improved, and the advanced raw processor. Each one of these are made in a fairly similar way. They're made with redstone, silicon, processor binding, and then the only thing that is different between each of these recipes is the material in the top right. So here it's iron, improved is gold, and advanced is diamond. So out of all of these resources, the only thing we don't have right now is the processor binding. This is made with two string and one slime ball or slime ball equivalent. So string we have, and I think we have a fair amount of it from early on in the playthrough using the, uh, the silkworms with our trees. Slime on the other hand is something that we actually don't have just yet. Now, I think there are two ways that we could go about getting fairly easy slime right now. One of the ways, the way that we're not going to do, but that you could do if you wanted to, is you can make congealed blood, which is this stuff right here, using a Tinker Smeltery. As you'll see that uh, one slime ball's worth of blood, you can pull it out into a casting basin and you get a coagulated blood, which you can then use as slime, right? And there are two ways you can get the blood into the smeltery. You can either get a mob in there. So if you can get, like if you could lure a mob to walk into your smeltery, you would get blood in them. You can also, I believe, just put rotten flesh directly into it. And on top of that, I'm fairly certain that you can also just stand in the smeltery. So if I were to, for example, grab, let's say a little bit of cobblestone here. Actually, let's grab a little bit more as well, just to be safe. Uh, so if I were to do something like this and kind of jump into the smeltery, I think you might have to have, let me test it. I think you might have to have a liquid in here. Yeah, by default, that does nothing. If we put like some iron in, that iron is going to turn into molten iron. Just making sure this lever is off. We'll put that back as well. Uh, but that iron is going to turn into molten iron. And once that iron turns into molten iron, if we step in, I'm pretty sure we will take damage whilst in there. And that uh, damage will be converted into blood in the smeltering. So once the iron has melted, let's jump on in. And yeah, we start to take damage. And as you can see, there is now uh, blood in the smeltery as well. And you can, uh, you can stay here really as long as you like. Ideally, we're not going to stay in here, though. We're going to jump out uh, so as to hopefully not die in the smeltery. But uh, if you wanted to, of course, you could. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do at all. But uh, if you wanted to, you could stand there, uh, you know, get some blood in the smeltery, jump out, eat a bit, go back in, do the same again, rinse and repeat. And uh, let's have a look. What do we have? We've got over one slime ball's worth. So now we could take this around to here. And I'm pretty sure all you have to do is, of course, click to make sure that the uh, blood is at the bottom. and then pull it out into an empty casting table. And there we go, we get a coagulated blood. Nice. So uh, that's one way of doing it. Uh, it's quite a time consuming way in that you have to keep jumping in the smeltery and it's also uh, you know, a fairly labor intensive way. You have to get keep getting in, getting out, eating, getting in, getting out, eating, rinse and repeat forever. But it does work and uh, you do actually get, I think 16 processor binding at a time. So if you just do this, this and this, oh, we get eight at a time, okay. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, uh, there is a quest over in the Nether You Mind quest line that uh, shows you how to make slime. So we actually did most of this quest line here in the last stream. Uh, the only reason that the quests have not been ticked off is that uh, when we made Witch Water, we didn't pick it up in a bucket. And so just to get the quest complete, and I guess also to start working towards the, um, the slime here, let's take a bucket of lava and drop that into the stone barrel here. Once again, that's going to start making us some Witch Water. Once that witch water is made, we'll pull it out in bucket form to complete this quest. We can then use, I think regular sand it was? Yeah, to make saw sand. That's gonna complete the next quest up. And then if we take a slight detour, what we can do is we can sieve the saw sand to get brown mushrooms. We have a 10% chance of getting both brown and red mushrooms if we sieve with a diamond mesh. And then from there, we can take those mushrooms and if we put them into a barrel with the witch water we had previously, that will make us a whole block of slime, thus getting us nine slime balls, which we could then turn into 72 processor binding, which is gonna be more than enough processor binding for today's stream. So what we'll do is we'll get the sand, we'll put this in. It's obviously quite unlikely that we're going to get a mushroom on the first attempt here, given that it's only a one in 10, so we should get some more witch water going here, just in case we don't. But uh, let us see about sifting this. If we are gonna sift it, we're gonna have to first get a new sieve though, because this sieve that we currently have is of course a heavy sieve, which only works with compressed blocks. So let's just temporarily move that over and then give this a try. 
unfortunately, we didn't get anything <laughs> from that uh, that soul sand there, which is somewhat unfortunate. Although all of the percentages here are fairly low, so the odds were not really on our side there. So Chet has pointed out that what we can do here is if we compress our sand first, like this, we can then take the compressed sand and put that into the barrel of witch water. That gets us a compressed block of soul sand, which we can then sieve, you know, if we wanted to over in here. And effectively we get nine soul sand per bucket of witch water, as opposed to one soul sand per bucket of witch water. And yeah, look at that. We've got three red mushrooms and three brown mushrooms. So now all we have to do is grab one final bucket of lava, drop that into the barrel again, and once again, once that turns into witch water, then we can take one of our six mushrooms, right click that on, and we'll get our first block of slime. So boom, and boom, nice. So we can craft that down, nine slime balls, and then uh, again, if we grab some string, I think for now we'll grab, you know, maybe six string. We don't need to craft up all 72 processor binding here. We're not going to need that many. In fact, I'm pretty sure 32 is going to be enough to last us for quite some time here. So let's grab some redstone. Let's also go check on how we're doing with silicon over in our induction smelter. We got 13, which is definitely a good start, but we are definitely going to need more, I think, in today's stream. And then what was the other item we needed for the processor bind uh, for the raw processors here? It was, oh, of course, iron, gold, and diamonds. So iron, we of course have. Gold, we can make. We do have one here, so we can make, I guess, the first one. So it was silicon, redstone, and processor binding. That gets us the improved pro uh, processor. We can do the same thing with iron to get the basic processor. And then I don't think that we have a diamond at the moment. We don't. However, we did find out in the last stream that if we take our overworld matter and sift it in the new diamond mesh, we do now have a 5% chance of getting diamonds from sifting that overworld matter. And so if we were to go ahead and take this, compress it up, and then sift it over here, I think we have a pretty good chance of getting at least one diamond from this. Okay, so all of those sifted later, you'll see we've got a bunch of, uh, of junk on us now, which is, uh, is less than ideal. Uh, let's begin crafting these down real quick if we can, uh, and maybe depositing things into our, into our chests. Again, hopefully, by the end of today's stream, this will be a problem of the past, not having enough, uh, enough storage space. For now, though, I actually think we might have to go so far as to make a new, like, chest or double chest, because we are very, very low on storage space here. And of course, now that we're using dark oak wood for our, in our botany pot, we're getting dark oak chests as well, as opposed to uh, regular oak chests. But uh, yeah, just temporarily while we work on the refined storage system, let's dump all this stuff in here. We did get five diamonds there, which is perfect. So we'll take those, we'll take the redstone, the processor binding, and the silicon. And once again, we should be able to combine all of those up. Diamond, redstone, processor binding, and silicon. This is a shapeless recipe, meaning you can put the items anywhere and you still get the uh, the final product. And there we go. That is that quest complete. And as the quest mentions, these need to be smelted. So in order to complete the next quest, we have to take each one of the raw processes and smelt those presumably in a regular old furnace. For that, we are going to need some fuel here. Boom and boom. And the smelting process is going to turn these raw processes into regular processes that we can then use for crafting. For example, if we want to make the controller, the brains of the refined storage network, we need four quartz enriched iron, one machine casing, three regular silicon, and then one advanced processor, uh, which we should be able to do just as soon as we smelt up this uh, raw advanced processor that we just made. So that is done. Let's smelt up the uh, the final processor there. Uh, do we have everything else in our inventory? I think we do. I think we are pretty much good to go here on the controller. Nice. The quest hasn't been unlocked yet, which is why we didn't get a little completion sound there, but there it is. And uh, now that we've completed the previous quest, that quest has become unlocked. And so at that point, we now need to make both the disk drive and the crafting grid. So the crafting grid is made using a crafting table an advanced processor and a regular grid. The regular grid is made with two improved processors, one 
destruction core and one construction core with three glass, one quad two inch iron and one machine casing. So the machine casing, once again, should be doable. We have the machine frames and we have the quartz enriched iron. In fact, we can just do something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and make the next one as well, because I know we're also going to need one for the disk drive. And we might as well also go ahead and bookmark these. So crafting grid, press A to bookmark and then uh, disk drive, A to bookmark. So the disk drive and the crafting grid both require one of these machine casings. Uh, the only thing that we've not made so far are the construction and destruction cores. These are, both, these are both made using basic processors. The destruction core is made with a basic processor and nether quartz. The construction core is made with a basic processor and glowstone, both of which we should have. So basically, chat, we need to make a bunch more processors and smelt a bunch more processors. For that, we are going to need a bunch more silicon. And so hopefully, we've got a little bit more in here. We don't, and that's due to a lack of power. Because of course, right now, we're trying to run all of the auto sieves here, each using 40 FE per tick, and the induction smelter using 80 FE per tick. Uh, in total, that's I think 200 FE per tick. And right now, if I'm not mistaken, our wind turbine is producing 118 FE per tick. So uh, power is definitely on the short side. However, in one of the newer updates to the pack, this option in the middle was added to reset the shop. What that does is it allows us to repurchase things that we've already purchased. So I'm pretty sure if I click this and that, we can now buy this wind turbine again for another 15 sea books. So if we pull together some of our many sea books here, we should be able to just go ahead and grab another one of these, which we can then add to the pre-existing turbine up on the surface, doubling our power up above 200 FE per tick. So I am once again gonna try and get this a little high up just so we can maximize power if we do that. So they both should now be producing, I think a hundred and, oh, phantoms are here. Let's quickly get underwater. I actually don't know if phantoms can swim. I'm assuming they can't. Oh, never mind. Phantoms can 100% swim. The good news is that I don't think they can navigate this uh, orb here. So let's just, uh, let's sleep. So a quick sleep later, and I think this is good. We're not banking up on power in here, but I think that's because right now the power is filling up inside of these uh, sieves. I think once uh, the power buffer inside of these uh, auto sieves completely fills up any second now, we should start to see uh, power backing up in the induction smelter as well. Yeah, that's slowly but surely starting to back up now, which is perfect. So we should continue to get some silicon. Um, but while we wait for that, let's see what we can make. I think we should be able to make quite a bit here. I think the only thing that we might be missing is some gold because right now we have zero gold. Uh, so I will do probably a bulk craft here if we just put a bunch of gold into the old smell tree. Uh, and I will try and I'm going to pull out like some of this stuff that we don't need here. For example, uh, we'll pull out this uh, blood. And I'm just going to break the casting table to get rid of it because I don't really think we need uh, that blood for anything at this point in time. We can also pull out the remaining iron, I think, here in ingot form. And then earlier, I did do this by accident. I got the uh, some of the invar, I think it is, into this casting basin, but not enough to fill the casting basin. And I don't know if I showed this on YouTube before, but so what you can do here is that uh, you can throw down a basic mechanical pipe. And if you set the bottom here, if you right click, shift right click, sorry, twice to set it to pull, uh, you can pull the liquid back out of the basin into the drain, which then replaces it into the, uh, into the smell tray. And for now, we can just go ahead and turn on the uh, ingot cast, and that's going to pull out both the invar and the iron in ingot form. So not too long later, we now have uh, three improved, two advanced, and three basic processors. And so we should, uh, if we do something like this, get a crafting table from there. Actually, we'll start with the disk drive because this one is much easier to make. It is just a regular Minecraft chest. And boom, disk drive acquired. Uh, let me do a quick double tap there to get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need in our inventory. And as we saw earlier, in terms of the destruction and construction core, uh, these are just basic processes with glowstone and nether quartz. And that should be everything for the grid, which should then be everything for the crafting grid. Nice. So this is kind of a basic refined storage system. It's not a particularly useful one just yet. Uh, for now, I am gonna put it here, although we'll probably end up moving it fairly shortly. But uh, this is kind of the basic setup of a refined storage system. And usually what you can do is you can put 
uh, discs into this disk drive that can hold items like a chest would. So the next quest on this way is for the 1K storage part, the smallest storage part. Uh, this is made with four silicon, one quartz enriched iron, three glass and one redstone. Uh, right now we only have two silicon. However, in the time that I've been making processes, hopefully we've generated at least a little bit of silicon. Oh, look at that 41, perfect. Okay, so back over here, let's grab some more glass and let's also pull back out some of that redstone. That should be everything for our first 1K storage part. And with this, we want to craft it into a 1K storage disc, which we can do with three quartz enriched iron, three redstone and two glass. And the idea here is that uh, if we were to place this into the disk drive, which has eight slots, we can then begin putting things in there if we give this system some power. So I think what we might do, or what we'll probably end up doing at some point in the future is running power from our wind turbines over into here. I am hoping somewhat soon that we can get a more robust power system than uh, just relying on the wind turbines. For now, what I think I'll do just to get this going is we will once again steal the pitiful generator, which I really thought was back there, but maybe it's hiding out in one of my chests. It is actually underneath my blast chiller, of course, we were making uh, blue ice. And in fact, I assume that, uh, yeah, we just still got ice coming in up there, which is perfect. Uh, let's quickly plug that hole. Cobblestone will do for now. But uh, over here, just as a proof of concept, let's do this and let's fill that up with some tiny coal. Like so, that should bring this online. Assuming that we're producing enough power, which it looks like we are. Right now, the system is only using five FE per tick and the pitiful generator produces, I believe, 30. So uh, this is online. And in the disk drive, you can see that we have zero out of 1000 storage. And essentially, this is just the number of items that you can hold. So one 1K disk can hold 1000 items. And so now, if I open up the crafting grid, I can begin putting my items into this area up here. And it basically acts as one giant chest that can hold up to a thousand items. Going forward, we can make things like the 4K storage part here, uh, which is made with three 1K storage parts, four basic processors, one quartz enriched iron, and one redstone. That would then allow us to make a 4K storage disk. And this continues on up. You can make 4K, 16K, and 64K storage disks. Each storage disk at that point, allowing you to store 64,000 items. And of course, inside of the disk drive here, you can put up to eight of those in here and if you want you can even put down multiple disk drives to really increase the amount of storage that you have one other thing that you can do that is going to help us tremendously is you can get what is called an external storage that being this guy right here uh, this is made with one improved processor along with one destruction and construction core so uh, just to get that going let me quickly craft up one more basic processor and get that smelting over in there. Uh, we also need two chests, one cable, which is made with quartz enriched iron, glass and redstone. Uh, the cable, by the way, can be used to uh, connect up different parts of your refined storage network. The only thing we're missing for that is one singular piece of quartz enriched iron. Uh, so I think what we are gonna have to do here is pull out some more iron and quickly smelt up at least one more batch of quartz enriched iron here. In fact, I think one more batch should be perfect. One more batch being three iron and one nether quartz uh, because that's going to get us four quartz enriched iron. Uh, we need three for the external storage and we're also one short on the cable. So boom, that gets us 12 cable. And then if we craft up another destruction and construction core, that should be pretty much everything. I think the only thing that we're currently missing at that point then uh, would be two chests, so 16 dark hook planks boom boom and boom we get an external storage so as i mentioned a minute ago the cable can be used to connect up your devices so if we do something like this uh, we can put the disk drive down over here and that will still work just fine so we can still see the items that we put in previously the external storage is super useful because what this allows you to do is it allows you to view items in a storage device in your crafting grid so if you have a chest, for example, like this chest here, you could put this down. And if I connected that up to my system, to my controller via my cable here, I would be able to see these items inside of this crafting grid. The way we're gonna use it, which is even more powerful, is we're gonna put this directly onto our draw controller like this. Uh, that's already connected to the uh, refined storage controller. And now in here, 
we have access to all of the items in all of our storage drawers and going forward as we add more storage drawers uh, you know around the room here we'll have access to all of those items in this one crafting grid the benefit here being that uh, let's say we wanted to make a block of redstone we can now just click the block of redstone in jei shift left click the move items button in jei and it will pull the ingredients for the recipe out of the storage drawers into the crafting grid for super easy crafting so no more do we have to jump up to reach the redstone or to reach the tiny coal or anything like that we can just pull it directly out of the crafting grid here and even better if we want to put things back into the storage system uh, let's say we want to put some you know redstone away we could take this out and if we go ahead and put it in like so it should deposit that redstone into the storage drawer now i think one thing we can do for a little bit of added safety here is inside of both the excel storage and the disk drive there's a priority button so we're going to set the priority of the external storage to five or 25 and any number we want we like really i'm going to set 25 and i'm going to set the number in the disk drive to negative 25 basically so long as the priority of the disk drive is lower than the priority of the external storage when you put items into the refined storage system so when i do put redstone in like this it will always try and put the items into the draw controller before it tries to put the item into this disk drive here so now I think all that we should really have to do here, I think if we can upgrade this storage disk to a 4K storage disk, I think at that point we could probably move most everything that we have into this refined storage system. Because of course the whole idea of this system is to get rid of all of the uh, the excess chests and, and to kind of simplify down our, uh, our storage solution, right? So what I'll do real quick is I will disconnect this. That's going to allow me to remove this uh, bronze here. And then I'll reconnect that. And before I forget, I'm going to reset that to 25, like that, set. Uh, but then what we can do over here, if you shift right click, you can uh, uncraft the storage housing and the storage part. Uh, the reason for that, of course, is that if we're going to upgrade this to a 4K storage part, we want to have the 1K storage part in its storage part form, not in disk form. All right, so not too long later, we now have three 1K storage parts. And boom, we also have a 4K storage part, which presumably we can craft with the storage housing to make a 4K storage part. And so now the question is, if we start putting things into this system, do we have enough space for all of our junk? I'm going to start with the more important stuff, which I think is over here. You know, we don't necessarily need all of the smooth stone and, you know, compressed flint in the system. That's not really something we're going to be crafting with too often. But uh, we'll start by putting all this stuff in. How much space have we used? Not that much, actually. So I think we should probably have more than enough space here for all the stuff that we have in our chests. It's just a case of moving it all over. So I've moved over everything in these drawers here. Let's go ahead and get rid of these now. The only drawers that are left are these two over here. So I think what I'm going to do, chat, is there's definitely some stuff we want here. But I think what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to make another trash can. This trash can is going to be just a general use trash can because sometimes there are items that we don't need or want to keep. But right now, there's not an easy way to get rid of them because our trash can is all the way out in the ocean. And I don't really fancy swimming all the way out there just to get rid of, you know, some sand. But uh, for example, we've got so much sand here and we've got 2000 sand in our drawer. So I'm fairly confident just getting rid of all of that sand. Uh, the same is kind of true with a lot of these blank sand casts. You know, I'll keep a few of them. I don't want to fill up my refined storage drives with you know 200 blank casts where we've only got 4,000 items worth of space i will keep some of them in case we need them later on down the line uh, also we can grab some uh, cooked apples here uh, by default by the way uh, this is not set to auto select so when you come in here you can't just start typing one thing that i do like to do is i like to change this uh, search box mode from normal to normal auto selected you just click this box here so now when you open it up i can just start typing i don't have to click on the uh, search bar at the top which is nice. I think we'll do the same thing as well with like the smooth stone and, you know, maybe some tiny coal. I'll try double clicking on the draw here just in case we've got space for tiny coal. But uh, no, it looks like the tiny coal is, is full. And so, yeah, again, I'm just going to dump this for now because I don't think we need to, uh, to fill our system with it. And one thing that people have been pointing out to me for a little while now, um, we do now have a bronze pickaxe and the bronze pickaxe has a mining level of diamond. It's like the fourth line down from the top there. And so one thing that we can finally do is we can finally break science blocks. So if we begin putting these uh, science blocks down that right now are taking up a bunch of space 
in our chests in these cardboard boxes, what we can now do is mine these using our bronze picks. We can actually pick them up and uh, deposit them into the system without taking up a tremendous amount of space. Uh, but there we go. That is pretty much all of our stuff stored away. Uh, we are getting somewhat close. We only have 900 items worth of space left, but I think that is fine. Let's get rid of the uh, remaining four chests there. And I guess we could also go and grab the last couple of items over in here. I will just grab all those and uh, for now throw those into the system as well. Like I said, this is not going to be a permanent location for it. I will probably move this somewhere else. We might even put it just like in the wall here. I'm not too sure if we're going to have like a new sphere off in this direction just yet. Um, we do, of course, want it to be somewhat near to the draw controller for now to use the external storage. But in the future, we could just run some refined storage cable, you know, to anywhere in the base, really, if we uh, if we wanted to do that. And yeah, next time we'll come back, I think we will look at getting, like I say, a more robust power source, something more reliable and something that generates a bit more than the two wind turbines, if that is possible. Uh, we can also start looking at uh, maybe going back up a bit because we have kind of delved a little deep down the quest line here. We've kind of gone right to the bottom just to get the uh, refined storage system. But now that we have that refined storage system, it's going to make crafting and just organization much, much easier going forward. No longer do I have to keep, you know, running around trying to find where a certain item is. Uh, no longer do we have to even get all the different items. We can just do all the crafting inside of the crafting grid, which is super nice. And for the YouTube viewers, one thing that I didn't show last time, but that is new in the pack, uh, the newest version added an upgrade to the Seabooks coffee. So uh, whenever you sip on Seabooks, you now get speed X for maybe like six seconds. It's not particularly long, but you do get this incredible speed for a very brief period of time, which is quite nice. It would be nice if we had that permanently. It would make getting back and forth between our uh, our two spheres much much easier but uh, for now guys i think that is probably about where we're going to wrap things up for today